Welcome back, everyone. And today it's my pleasure to welcome Karan George to Showbiz India and to Los Angeles. It's great to see you. Thank you. How does it feel in sunny California uh, once I, again? Well, I'm used to sunny because I'm, I'm coming all the way from Mumbai. So the sunny is not surprising. Uh, but there's a little bit of a cool breeze, which is which is heartening to know that that's what's different about the weather here, <laughs> as opposed to what we're going through in Mumbai, which is sweltering heat. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, or you can't. <laughs> Trust me, you can't. <laughs> Last year you were here and you shot extensively in Los Angeles and in San Francisco right. for the film. Right. So how does it feel <coughs> to be back now with the director's cut and releasing uh, it? Well, it's, uh, lots of memories came back when I landed into LA again. Uh, of course, I have been, but you know, this time with a relaxed state of mind, it takes you back to those terrifying shooting days we had. It was a tough uh, first schedule. We started the film in Los Angeles and we weren't shooting in LA proper. We were shooting in, th uh, in locations three and four hours out of the... Yeah, like Lancaster. Yeah, yeah, everywhere. Lancaster being the most predominant location uh, because it's a journey film and we needed to kind of make it look like it was various topographies of America. So we shot a lot out of the, the, the heart of the uh, city. But it feels good to be back because I think very few films, especially in India, uh, get the opportunity of a second phase. Uh, and this is the international director's cut now. Um, we're releasing platform, of course, in North America, and we've already released in Poland. Uh, we hope to have this version in Germany and maybe in Russia this year. So we have our second phase that kind of started and flagged off with Poland last week. Uh, so it's exciting. Um, I've never known in India for a film to have two cuts before. And this is a kind of a first experience. So with a lot of kind of objectivity, we reached the second cut uh, because we knew it was for a different audience altogether. And how did you react when you first were approached with this idea? Or was this your idea? It was actually Fox and us in tandem. I realized the importance of uh, catering to a totally different mind space, a totally different uh, cinego headspace when it came to um, this film. And I knew that there's a certain amount of explanation and indulgence when it comes to us making films uh, in India, uh, which we need to cut off, slice off um, when we have to address a world a global market. Uh, so it was something that Fox and I decided in tandem that we would do. And I, in fact, insisted that um, it's, no input should be taken from me because I'm too close to my own material. And um, I'm not used to shortening things, I'm used to expanding them. <laughs> uh, my shortest film has been My Name is Khan, which is 2 hours right. and 40 minutes. My longest being 3 hours and 32. So uh, clearly, brevity is not my forte. And that's why we were very happy to have Alan Bell, uh, who came on, who's a very, very prolific editor. In tandem with the editor of my film, Deepa Bhatia, they sat together and mulled over what to remove and to reach a coherent to our cut, which is what we have in our phase two right now. The one thing that everyone thinks will be removed, thinks will be removed, has not been removed. The songs are all in place. Uh, there were some parts of the film that we felt would not uh, resonate very effectively with a global audience, which we've removed. Um, and also we've kind of sliced off um, all the indulgences that maybe I had uh, incorporated within the framework of the narrative. Uh, so I would say that uh, we are all very happy with this cut. Uh, in fact, I saw it and instead of being like, you know, uh, like a possessive parent uh, to my film, I was like a very satisfied one. Uh, I watched it and I watched it with a great amount of objectivity and I was really happy that all the major plot points are in place. The entire framing and structure is in place. It's just a far more tight and uh, taut version of my work. Interesting. And I'm happy with it. And I really was when I watched it and I said, you know, I shouldn't be because there are 40 minutes that I had conceived that are not part of this film. But I was. So I, I would very proudly say this is the director's international cut. So the, do you think that has perhaps actually been a learning experience for you for your next projects? I, I have grown to realize. And actually Deepa, who's the editor of My Name is Khan, was like holding my hand right. So she kept saying, cut this off, cut this off, cut this off. And I would say, name, I don't want to cut it. Um, so she was like, she in fact I think is happier with this cut than she is with the cut that we came to together which, which India and the diaspora mm -hmm. audience saw. Uh, so I mean it's taught me that definitely editing is a very very large and important process and something that um, I should kind of stay away from sometimes <laughs> uh, so that uh, we have a final product that is, that is, that is good. Um, I realized that, that as I said brevity and um, Tightening things may not be exactly my strength and I have to own up to that. So taking you back a little further, can you tell me a little bit about the collaboration at the inception phase with Fox? Uh, well, three years ago I came into LA and I happened to meet, uh, and I was very privileged to meet Jim. Jim Giannopoulos, he is the president of uh, 20th Century Fox. Uh, we sat and discussed the possib possibilities of doing something together. And it was then that I was researching My Name is Khan. 
Um, I was here with um, Ayan Mukherjee, Kajol's cousin actually, who then went on to direct Wake Up Sit for me. He and I, he was my assistant on Kabir Vidana Kena, so he came with me to research all the material we needed um, from various Muslim organizations uh, in uh, the West Coast. Uh, so we were together and we were structuring the film and it was then that I met um, you know, the, the executives at Fox and told them that I had this film that I was very pa passionate about, very excited about, the story I felt that globally was very imperative for me to tell as a filmmaker. And they were really excited and they said, if you do this, let's do this together. Uh, and of course, one thing led to the other and then it finally did fructify into our association and I was very happy to deal with them. I think what's great about Fox is that um, you don't get into a corporation, you get into a family and we're used to that. Right. Back home, uh, that's how we operate mm -hmm. with each other, you know, that's how we like it. Yeah. You know, we're kind of over emotional, melodramatic people. Uh, so we don't like the whole corporate structuring and the whole modalities that come with corporates. With working with Jim and Sanford and Vijay back home, um, it was great because I, th I thought I was walking, working with a family. I wasn't working with like uh, an international studio that one has heard so much about and feared so much about. You know, where they said that they will be invasive, they will come in your way, and there was none of that. They just let me be, do my thing, were so supportive right through. And it was wonderful because even logistically and modality-wise, we opened so many new markets with My Name is Khan. It's been India's first global film. It's released in more than 20 or 25 markets that no Indian film has ever reached. And it's been fascinating the entire process. Uh, I've never, never been through these kind of um, events, these circumstances, these kind of box office possibilities. And it like new markets like Egypt and Bahrain and Kuwait, um, in Indonesia, we have such a wide release now, we're going to be in phase two in Germany, Poland, Russia, all the Middle Eastern countries. It's opening everywhere because of the infrastructure that Fox offers. So it's been fantastic and I feel very honored and very privileged to be even sitting here with you in a Fox space, so-called um, zone. Uh, At the Four Seasons in Beverly Hills. At the Four Seasons <laughs> in Beverly Hills. I feel very Hollywood. Yeah, <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. And congratulations for that. You know, as a young filmmaker, that must be a very heartening feeling to bring cinema into and bring Bollywood into Let's the globe. Let's just go back to when you said young film. <laughs> I like the sound of that because it no longer is a truth, I want to tell you. This is all L'Oreal because I'm worth it. Uh, it's a lot of color in my hair uh, and I'm all of 38 this month. So young would not be the operative word here, but I'm glad you still think I am. And, and no, of course you so are. I don't need to go and make a few appointments in Los Angeles. <laughs> no, not yet. <laughs> all right, give me, give me a decade. Yeah. Maybe then. Right. No, but as a young filmmaker, seriously, we're very proud that you brought Bollywood into mainstream. Right. And so what do you think you would continue to do as a filmmaker to bridge that gap? You know, I don't plan to do any such thing. I, this was a one-off experience for me. This was a film that warranted this kind of release, that warranted this kind of global presence because of its content, because of the way its syntax was, because of the tonality of the film. Not every film I direct will have this ethos. Not every film needs to travel to this extent. This one needed to because, as I said, of the above reasons. Uh, but not every film should. And if tomorrow I land up making a quintessential Bollywood film, then I'll be silly uh, to expect Fox to do this for me. Uh, it really is a film dependent on how we should. So it's not that I'm try trying to and wanting to kind of bridge the two woods, Bolly and Holly, in any way. I don't plan to do that. I'm no brand ambassador of Bollywood, and I'm definitely not going to be the flag bearer of the first Indian filmmaker who directs an English language film. That's not something I want to do. I want to only make Hindi language films. That's the ethos I understand. That's the cinema I know and I'm passionate about. And that's the presence I want to make in this world. It's really not exciting for me to direct an English language film at all. I don't think I'll be the right choice. And um, I don't think that's my dream. My dream is to really take Indian cinema to another level. Uh, not leave it. I admire your honesty. Speaking of your uh, subject matter, this was in a way a transitional phase for you in terms of what you had directed before. There were super successful films, but all very typically Bollywood, yes. you know, song and dance, totally. family oriented numbers. What was that shift in you? I think age, uh, maturity, uh, also a sense of defiance that where you feel that there's a certain kind, a section of people who feel you're not capable of doing a certain kind of cinema and you're almost uh, critically written off like oh that's Bollywood and that's bubblegum and that's melodrama and that's NRI and that's diaspora and that's mush and gush and I've heard all of that and I'm like look that's the cinema I have loved watching when I was when I was young I've grown up with and I love to offer that to, to cinegoers all over the world but this is also a cinema that I'm capable of making and capable of interpreting on celluloid. 
uh, that's also something I want to do. So it's my way of also, that's why I say defiance, which is not necessarily a good thing, but definitely it comes from certain kind of age maturity and defiance, which is what my name is Khan was for me. Now that I've done it, I feel like I don't mind going back to song and dance again, because I think I've taken a three-year sabbatical from that zone, and I'm happy to kind of go into a Bangra or a disco again. So you feel fulfilled with the outcome? I feel totally. I feel, uh, I believe my name is Khan is my mo most uh, evolved piece of work. Um, I think there are certain parts and sequences of the film that I would not recognize if if I was in a coma and brought out and said and, and given some kind of bout of amnesia and shown. And I may not be able to say this is my work um, uh, because I really felt that I made a conscious effort to change my, my cinema language in this film and I wanted to. Uh, because I thought that I'd reach a certain stage in my career professionally where I was not challenged anymore by what I was doing. Uh, I remember being on the sets of Kabhi Alvedana Kena shooting a very elaborate song and dance sequence, feeling very bored because I felt it was something that I had done before, something that was coming a little too easy to me, something that wasn't really tapping into my inner instincts as a filmmaker. And I felt I needed to get out of my comfort zone and make a film. And that's what My Name is Khan is. It's an uncomfortable zone. What about the controversy that surrounded the film right before its release? Was that extremely unnerving for you as a director? It is, because I don't think we have uh, creative democracy in our country, really. I think filmmakers are not allowed to breathe uh, easy. Uh, and, you know, we have to think twice before we make statements or films and I don't think that uh, that's necessarily fair on us but uh, unfortunately that's the way it is uh, and we have to grow and realize that it's going to be difficult sometimes um, and you have to watch your path, watch your word, watch your every move. Um, it is difficult for us because I think it's a, we are in a creative industry, we don't mean to offend any sensibility, we don't mean to be insensitive but sometimes there are pressures, sometimes there are some some situations and circumstances that we are very far removed from and can do nothing about and feel extremely helpless, which is what Shah Rukh and I felt pre-release. Uh, but I'm glad we came through. I'm glad that we had a tremendous support system in the form of Fox and various members of the movie industry that stood by us. And more than anything else, the people of the country, uh, the people of my, my resilient city, Mumbai, that really came out in hordes to support us, to prove that there's nothing beyond their love and passion for cinema and nothing should come in the way of that. And I'm really proud of the Mumbaiker who stood ground um, and came and supported us.